Okay, so Renick's testimony there, she's basically talking about her ex-boyfriend, uh, Michael Humphrey, is the individual who did it. She was going there to, uh, own, to, to get tell him that, he, that she wanted a divorce, did not know that Michael Humphrey had a gun. But keep in mind, Michael Humphrey had been convicted, has actually cooperated with prosecutors, uh, so he has gotten a lighter sentence as a result of that, testified at trial. So let me bring in our guest. Uh, we have Lisa Lockwood with us, who is a crime analyst and a forensic uh, SWAT person in a former life, as well as Andrew Scott, who has been with us, a trial attorney. Um, let me go to you first, Lisa. The, the defendant on the stand, you're a crime analyst. Uh, the jury buying this, you think, or what? Uh, hard to say. So after I listened to this testimony, I had to think, for one, I do feel she was part and parcel to it. Was she the trigger person? It's hard to know because we know when we're working deals with some of these criminals to get a lesser sentence to testify against somebody, they're willing to do just about anything in order for that to happen. And we know that Michael's already been in jail, but pled to a lesser sentence because he helped and assisted with his testimony regarding what he was going to say actually happened to point the finger at her as the trigger person. So it's very difficult. I don't have that answer. The gun was later found, but I don't know what happened as far as the forensics of that gun, because it was turned over. He pointed out where it was abandoned, and I never got to hear were her fingerprints on that. Yeah, so let's listen. Obviously, the prosecutor is not buying it. Let's listen to the cross-examination at the specific point where the prosecutor starts going after her story with regard to whether Michael Humphrey was the individual that did it and that she had no idea what was about to go down. Lisa Lockwood, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the prosecutor's confrontational style. Maybe it's just because you look in the mirror, you see the, see the same guy. I, I think the guy's excellent. Uh, this is a murder case. This is a murder defendant on the witness stand. Do you think he was overly confrontational with her on the stand or just being a, a solid, you know, in-your-face prosecutor? Well, we know we know about uh, opinions and, you know, calling her and characterizing her as heartless because of that, knowing that the brother had every right to know what happened to his brother and then pointing the finger on him, knowing full well he was innocent and she knew who the person was if it was not her herself. Um, I think I think that strategy is uh, entertaining somewhat. Is it unprofessional? I mean, it does. We got an ob objection, so we know that uh, it wasn't going to go well, but I did find it entertaining. And if true, yes, uh, she should be characterized as somebody who is heartless, who already attempted to kill her husband with Percocet and crushing it in his shake, in his protein shake. So um, as far as I'm concerned, we do have a person who is heartless here. Okay, Lisa, what, what does it mean to you that the jury's been out second day of deliberations over five hours? And so far, they've only asked for details about the victim, Ben uh, Rennick's life insurance money, and what the definition of active, I'm sorry, of aided and abetted uh, means. So you, you're reading anything into that question? Yes, I think that means that there's definitely a, a conundrum of what her role is. If they do believe that she was not the person who pulled the trigger based on her testimony, what was her role and can she be convicted of that for actually uh, being there? But I mean, we know already going into, into this, there are so many pieces of the puzzle, like the prosecutor said, going forward and bringing somebody from seven years past who you had not had a great relationship with to be the heavy, so to speak, why would you even set yourself up for a confrontation at this remote location versus doing it on the phone if you felt that there was any other fear? So um, I'm having a hard time believing her myself. Yeah, there, there's such truth to that. It could be talking to just one or two jurors as they're deliberating. Lisa Lockwood. Is this making you feel bad for her? Uh, no, no, the opposite. Just because of all the testimony that had already come through, uh, speaking with her her friend, Miss Shaw, and what Miss Shaw okay. revealed regarding the, the Percocet protein shake and her involvement, she has no remorse that her former husband is dead. There's no remorse. The remorse, I feel, is based on the fact that she's being implicated in all of it. So... I'm having a hard time believing that um, she's suffering in any way because Ben's no longer with us. Okay, and we also know part of her testimony is that she was there and she had no idea that Michael Humphrey had a gun and that there was going to be a shooting. Let's listen to a little bit of the cross-examination that after the shooting occurred <clears throat> with respect to her not calling 911. 
Lisa, I, I have to agree. I, I like to cross-examine like this too, because not only is he getting great answers, he is himself testifying, I say this over and over again to the jury, before, and, and irrespective of what her answer is, but this, these answers are brutal um, in terms of knowing that her husband is either dying or dead, not calling 911. What do you think about the answers? And how do you, what, what's your scorecard on this prosecutor? Having, having watched a lot of jury trials, and seeing juries fall asleep quite frequently. Um, his approach is gregarious, bombastic, and there's no doubt that they are engaged and they are understanding it based on the narrative that he is playing out for what exactly happened versus letting her just do, uh, you know, these quick yes, no's, et cetera. He is telling the story and not pulling it from her so that she's stuck there stumbling with her answers. And you can see there even the deep swallows as she feels like she's, right now, she's got all eyes on her, and the truth is being revealed. Yeah, what a difference a great cross can make in, in a trial. But we will wait and see, because the verdict uh, ultimately is with the jury that's out deliberating, asking some questions about aiding and abetting. Who knows what that means? We're going to take a quick break here at the Low Crime Network. We'll be back on the other side. Please stay with us.